what's up i'm triple shoot battlefield 6 has fully released and in this video i'll be showing you how to get the best fps possible for the best experience least input latency best stability etc let's do it this video doesn't cover windows optimization at all instead in the description down below you'll find guides to get even more out of your system previously i did cover optimizing the game in the beta and of course i'm very pleased to tell you that fps has hugely increased across the board with basically all of the issues that i had before without wasting your time at all i'll jump into the firing range and let's quickly run through some settings while the firing range isn't 100 accurate for in-game fps counts it's more than good enough and obviously your fps in actual maps depending on the map will be slightly worse starting off i've got 95 fps and when i'm not recording i'm around 170 so keep that in mind my fps is usually double what i'm getting here i've got a 3080 ti i play borderless and i'm playing at 2k so first of all pause your game head across to options on the far left and then graphics We'll skip over the first and second block for now, and we'll start on display down here. Full screen mode should be set to full screen for the best input latency, but borderless is more than fine for some people. I've heard some issues about FPS caps or something like that between borderless and full screen. If you're experiencing something weird, just try switching it between these two or going back and forth. Resolution should match your display, and of course, VSync should be turned off. If you're in full screen mode, you can change your refresh rate, but again, make sure that matches your monitor's capabilities. Once you're done with this, Scrolling all the way up to the top, let's quickly run through the different performance presets for which we've got balanced and performance. This is the easiest way to change your in-game graphics options, just one toggle. With balance, I'm getting 75 FPS and performance, I'm getting around 86, but we can make this a lot better. If we set the performance preset to custom and change the graphics quality preset here, we've got low, medium, high, ultra, and now with the full release, overkill, and of course, custom. So starting off with low, I'm getting 93-ish FPS, medium 88, high 82, ultra 75, and overkill, which I wouldn't really recommend as it demolishes any amount of VRAM that you have available, gives me around 65 FPS. So while this new option is good to have, it's probably going to be pointless for most people. For me, I'll be starting from custom and we'll head into the graphics quality settings tab by clicking graphics quality settings, which is the third option here. Inside of here, we get a ton of different options to play with. At the very top, graphics quality, I'll set it down to low and it lows everything else in this menu down to the lowest possible option. With this default low preset, you will need to reload into the map for changes to take place, but I'm getting around 93 FPS. If you scroll all the way down in this list and you're running a super low end system, you can actually change screen space AO from GTA out low to off and you'll get even more FPS than the lowest graphics preset option. Just like that, I've jumped up to 95, 96. While this technically is the lowest the in-game graphics options let you go, you can actually push it even further if you're willing to lose out on some light and quality and things like that. If you pause the game, options, and head across to system this time, you'll see command console. If you enable this, you can use the tilde key, which is the key right below escape, to bring up the in-game console, as you can see here. Inside of here, I'll be using the command world render dot light tile cs path enable and we'll change it between one and zero the default is one which is what you're seeing here and if we instead change this to zero you'll find it down below to copy and paste you'll see that i jump from 90 something fps to 121 which is a huge jump obviously the lighting has suffered drastically jumping into a conquest jeez the menu doesn't look any better dropping into a conquest it looks reasonable with it set to one or the default of on i'm getting 68 and off i'm getting around 74 so a small boost here with just one simple option while this is technically a console command we can get this to set by default when we start the game and i'll show you that later on but for now at least if you're running a super low end system this should make things even more tolerable i'm getting 84 fps 85 and if i use this console command to set it to zero you can see there's barely any change but we moved up to 96 ish fps you'll only really notice this in darker areas of the map so if i let's say i'm looking around in a dark building 97 fps if we set it back to the default of on you can see lighting has drastically improved but we've dropped down to 90 ish fps so it's a good 10 to maybe 30 percent fps you'll be getting depending on your system the map etc on and off Again, I'll touch on creating a config file to make this default in just a second. Returning to the training ground, graphics, and quality settings. In here, there's a ton of different options. I'm not going to bore you with going through everything here. Texture quality and texture filtering is basically a freebie when it comes to FPS. I can crank this up to ultra. And as long as you're not maxing out your VRAM usage in the bottom right, 
you'll need to reload into whatever map whenever you change these options. Your FPS should be basically where it was before. There's almost no change here, but the world quality should increase quite drastically. I'd recommend setting your texture quality and filtering up as high as it'll go without crossing your video memory threshold or the max in the bottom right. Usually high is okay, maybe ultra if you've got a higher end GPU. If you're running a super low end GPU, you're probably not gonna be raising any of these at all. Quickly running through these, texture quality, filtering, I had no FPS difference. Mesh quality was quite surprising. In this training grounds, you won't see a difference, but you will see a difference playing normal games. And for me, low, medium, I had 135 FPS, high 134, Ultra 132 and Ultra 129. I wouldn't go higher than Ultra for mesh quality, but it's mostly free to raise up to at least medium. Terrain quality, also no difference, low, medium, but raising this too high, I did drop from 130 to 127 FPS, so a very small cost here. As long as you have more than enough VRAM, it's probably not gonna be too bad at all. Low or medium is fine here. Undergrowth quality, even on normal maps with regular vegetation, I didn't see a difference here. Effects quality, low, high, no difference. Volumetric quality, there is a difference even in this testing grounds here. Low, I was sitting at 172 in-game. Medium, high, 172. And ultra, I dropped to 155. In the testing area, it was 135-ish, 135, and then down to 118. So there's a pretty big drop from high to ultra here, and each step does take away a bit of FPS volumetric quality. Just leave this on low. Lighting quality, I didn't see a difference. Local light, no no difference. Sun shadow quality, I only had a difference in the beta, where each step I raised it, I lost 2 to 4 FPS, 120, 118, 114, 108, and now we've got an overkill option where that probably would have dropped even further. However, now in the full release, even on normal maps, I don't see a difference here with these options, so they probably improved something on the back end at least for my setup. This was one of the heavier hitters from the beta. Shadow filtering, PCF versus PCSS, I didn't see a difference here. Reflection quality surprisingly has a pretty big difference nowadays. On low in-game, I sit at 116, medium at 109, high 102, so I do lose a good amount of FPS. Leaving this on low is what I would recommend, and it only changes reflections slightly. Screen space reflections, surprisingly, usually a cheap tech. You've got off, low, and high. In Battlefield, in pretty much every Every map you'll notice a pretty big drop in FPS. I had 136 FPS with this turned off, 129 with it turned on, and 122 with it set to high. So I'd always recommend SSR set to off unless you like the shiny ground slash just rained look. It does add a lot of flavor to the game, especially in the training area here, but during general gameplay, it's just a big FPS hog. Post-processing quality, I didn't see a difference here. Maybe visually, but performance-wise, no difference. Then high fidelity objects amount, I didn't see a difference here, not at all between low, medium, high, and ultra. However, screen space AO and GI, which is ambient occlusion and global illumination, we've got off, GTAO low, high, and SSGI low and high. With every option you move up here, you'll lose quite a bit of FPS. When you set your graphics preset to low, this will be set to GTAO low as well. You can actually set this off for a pretty big boost in FPS, almost for free. Again, just with a bit of cost of lighting, instead of making the game a lot darker like that console command, it makes it a little bit brighter, gets rid of shadows, contact shadows, things like that. With it set to off, I had 138, GTAO low, 133, GTAO high, 132, jumping up to SSGI, 121 on low, and 109 on high. These are brand new numbers from a couple of games that I played a moment ago. So having the set to off is gonna give you a huge boost in performance and it'll help you see just a slight bit better inside of dark areas. And with that, we've run through all of the in-game options. Obviously, you'll need to restart your game for those changes to take place. Again, just a quick run through of everything. I had everything set down to low, texture quality filtering as high as you can go, mesh quality, terrain quality, quality medium is fine, everything else low, all the way down to SSR off and AOGI off as well. Then, if we head into the advanced section of graphics, which is the first block of options here, you'll see that we have a ton of different options here. Fixed res scale, 100, I would highly recommend, and make sure your frame rate limiter is turned off, unless you're trying to record or stream, or stream on Discord, watch YouTube, etc., and all of your other programs are lagging, in which case, cap your FPS to just slightly below what you're getting in-game to free up some resources for the rest of your PC. Dynamic resolution scale, always leave this turned off. NVIDIA reflex, low latency, if you have it, I'd recommend setting this to enabled, Setting it to enabled and boost should give you a small boost in input latency, so it might be a little bit more reactive, but usually it just adds more CPU 
usage, so it could actually cost you a handful of FPS. Anti-aliasing, you got TAA, DLAA, FSRAA, and XESS native AA. These are all set by default. Upscaling won't be used at all, which is actually quite surprising. Did you know I was getting 100 FPS almost with absolutely no upscaling at 2K? It's really good. But you can head into options, advanced, and actually change the upscaling technique to DLSS, although this doesn't seem to be possible on older GPUs, or FSR. Either of these should give you a massive boost in quantity, and of course, with whatever technology you select, you can actually enable frame generation and future frame rendering, but I wouldn't recommend that, as it will make your game a little bit sluggish. For example, here's a DLSS quality, and we jumped all the way up to 112, 15-ish FPS from 100, giving us a pretty nice boost. You can always drop your upscaling quality to balanced for a bigger boost in performance, although if you're playing at 1080p already, you'll notice some weird graphics artifacts. But again, I moved up to 118, almost 120. FSR on quality, I am getting a higher FPS. I'm at about 123 on quality and 130 on balanced. But of course, you can see some weird shimmering that's happening that isn't necessarily there with DLSS. So if you have DLSS, I definitely recommend using it. Frame generation, while it's a cool thing to have, it gives you more frames, it does increase your input latency drastically. You won't notice it so much with a controller, but you definitely will with mouse and keyboard. With it turned on, I'm getting 140-ish FPS, and of course, with it turned off, I'll drop back down to my usual 110-ish. Future frame rendering should increase visual smoothness as well, but this also adds input latency. Finally, performance overlay. Here's where you can enable simple mode, which looks like this. You can see it in the top right. Extra mode, you can see all over. And finally, advanced, if you want to get super nerdy without using third-party software like River Tutor, MSI Afterburner, etc. For me, I'm happy with the Steam FPS overlay in the top left. And of course, if you'd like to find out how to enable slash use that, as it's pretty powerful, you'll find a link down below. And with that, we've basically run through all of the in-game graphics options. I would recommend heading across to the graphics tab of your settings, scrolling down and camera settings, raise or lower your field of view to whatever you're comfortable with, while this will cost you FPS if you raise it, play with whatever you're comfortable with, as that's what will give you the best competitive edge. Weapon motion blur, off. World motion blur, 100% off, never use this. Camera shake, lower this as much as possible, and reduce sprint camera bobbing. These should all help with motion sickness and make the game feel a little bit better. Then chromatic aberration, I turn off, vignette, and film grain, which should all give you a small boost in being able to see things more clearly, etc. And while it won't gain you more FPS, none of these settings for the most part, except for field of view, it just cleans up the display a bit, making it a bit easier to PvP. Everything else here, basically your preference system. If you're not going to use the console, I'd recommend turning it off, as if you happen to hit your tilde key, you can't move around, escape doesn't work, you have to hit tilde again to close it. A little bit annoying. But yeah, if you're happy with the FPS you're getting, I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. But if you'd like to get even more playing around with some configuration options, let's go ahead and do that. Just keep in mind, when you have the console enabled, you can run commands here and change them in-game live to see the difference, just like this light tile option, which you'll find linked down below. But if you'd like to set this to off by default, which isn't the game's default, here's how you do it. Quit your game completely, and then navigate across to where your game is installed. On Steam, you can just right-click Battlefield 6, manage browse local files, and you'll be dropped straight next to the exe files, DLLs, things like that. You can create a new text document, right click, new text document, and as long as you see .txt at the end of it, you can select everything and type in user.cfg, completely removing .text. If you don't see .txt at the very top, hit view, then show, and make sure file name extensions and hidden items are both ticked. On Windows 10, you'll see the ribbon bar at the top, view, and then they should be checkboxes on the right hand side somewhere. Then completely rename new text document .text and make it user.cfg. Then open it with any text editor. Notepad is fine. And in here we can enter these commands and make them run by default. Here's this light tile path enable option that I had. Default is one, zero is off. You can just remove the options from here to set them back to the default. But of course you can punch in things here, save the file, and they'll be set the next time you launch the game. Pretty cool. In the description slash the comments, you'll find a bunch of these that you can play around with. Most of these though won't change your FPS too drastically. And if they do, they'll change your visual experience as well, just like this option here. I'll post a couple of things down there, but that's how you make a user config for Battlefield 6. So you can play around with some more advanced settings. But yeah, anyways, that's really that. So hopefully this video helped you. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.